Seems like you've been up to a lot lately. Mm -hmm. Motorcycle license? Yeah. How you looking out there, bro? Uh, you know, I'm looking... I'm looking bad, bro. Still going to flight school too? You know, with all the YouTube coaching clients I've been taking on, I don't have as much time, so I can only fly at night. But as you're trying to go to sleep, gazing out at the stars, you're gonna see my wingtip flying over Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Do you, do you end up buying the Porsche? Oh, yeah, Porsche. It's, it's um, European. You should maybe read a book. Got it. Read um, book. I didn't know YouTube paid that much. Oh, it does. It does. A lot of money. No, I, but I mean for someone with no talent. The weirdest part about all this was actually like running into Emily again. I was like on my way to a movie alone and uh, saw her in the parking garage. Wasn't she that girl you took on all those fancy dates last year? Aphrodite! She didn't want me. I've been coping ever since. Well, how was it seeing her again? Hey. Good to see you. Yeah, how are you, how are you doing? Psh, you know, psh, good. Played it cool, you know. That's, that was the move, so that's what I did. Well, I bet she regrets dumping you, man. Yeah, you know, um, I feel like she doesn't care. You know, she's never cared about, like, superficial things. Doesn't that go against everything you've preached on the channel up to this point? Like, looks, money, status, game? Yeah, well, that's what the, you know, the, the literature had said, you know, the rational male Roland Tomasi. I don't know, I, sometimes I feel like Red Pill YouTube, it's like we're all just a bunch of sad boys looking for love, but we don't actually have any of the answers. Wow. Damn near Shakespearean, bro. Really? Impressive. I appreciate it. So what do we do? What's the next video? What do we do? Right, so, you know, I've been studying the algorithm. The next one should be called, They Always Come Back. They Always Come Back. Do you actually believe that? Ah, uh, I don't know. But it is a thought that gives me hope, keeps me going. Everyone copes. Everyone copes. The key is to cope in style. There are three fantasies I've consistently had when I've been out on a run or something like that pretty much all my life. The first is the fantasy of being an actor at a red carpet event of a big movie premiere. The second is being at the bank and then suddenly there's like a robbery or a shooter or even a zombie apocalypse that starts up and I somehow am good with a gun and save a bunch of people's lives. Maybe I sacrifice myself heroically to save a lot of people. <laughs> I feel, somehow I feel like a lot of people have had that vision. And then the third one, of course, is running into an ex, running into someone who has rejected me in the past or for reasons outside of my control, it hasn't worked out. And of course, this time when she sees me, I'm like rich, I'm like muscular and more handsome than ever. And I'm a very successful entrepreneur. I'm at like the top 1% of whatever field I progress in. I can't claim to be the healthiest of men psychologically, but I know I'm not the only guy who's had thoughts like these. We've all at some point thought it might be fun to flex on the X, so to speak. But what would make someone want to reach out and connect with you again once they've already rejected you? I'll admit this has only happened to me a couple times in life, but I thought for this video, it might be fun to do a little bit of a thought experiment. Why she might come back after rejecting you. The first reason that I came up with is that you've raised your personal standards. This is something that Tony Robbins would talk a lot about when I would listen to his seminars and audiobooks back in the day, like back when I was in my early 20s, about how so much of life is determined by the standards you set for yourself. Now the standards you could set, if you raise your standards, it could be pretty trivial. You could set new standards around how much water you drink each day, what time you wake up, your sleep hygiene, the extra focus and discipline you enact during periods of deep work. All of these would be a symbol of you raising your standards. You maybe exercise more courage when connecting with a new mentor or a potential client. This is powerful because raising your standards activates something called the winner's effect. The author in a book with the same title talks about how the motivation to achieve, it can feel almost like a physical impulse. Something is physically impelling you to do more and take on more and achieve more. And this feeling has a basis outside of just your imagination. You can actually pinpoint what is going on in someone's biology when they are extremely motivated. We're doing figure eights. And especially doing things that build up psychological wins affects your brain in a cascade of ways. One of these is improved testosterone levels. There was a study done in 2006 where several scientists at Cambridge, I believe, studied 17 male London traders as the traders every morning would place bets on the markets. And the researchers measured the testosterone levels each morning and afternoon for
for eight days for each of the traders. The traders had some mornings, maybe they were super well rested, where they had higher testosterone levels. And other mornings, maybe due to extra stress or not sleeping as well, their testosterone levels were lower. What they found was that the traders made more money on the days where their testosterone levels were higher. This is because testosterone made the traders more adventurous and combative. And this style, especially in the terrain of trading, yielded them higher profits, bigger bonuses, and perhaps a contribution to the price of their next Porsche. Basically, testosterone is a huge impelling force. It's a drive. And it not only boosts something like your sex drive and makes you more aggressive, it changes the chemistry of brains. And remarkably, as these Cambridge scientists showed, it also seemed to be linked to winning. Higher morning testosterone levels in the traders predicted higher profits on their day's trading. They were just more aggressive. They were more risk oriented. They were even more charismatic. Now it actually goes the other way. If you do things in your day to stack up more wins, you psychologically begin to see yourself as different. As Brandon Carter would put it back in the day, when you keep new promises to yourself, you build up self-confidence way faster. You can trust yourself to do a certain thing. That's what it means to have higher standards and live up to them. And so it might sound simple, but if you say, I'm going to drink a gallon of water today, and then you actually do that thing, and then you do it for days on end, weeks on end, you start to see yourself differently. You've raised the standards of your personal life with your work ethic, your habits around your health. Now, drinking a gallon of water alone is not gonna make someone who was in your past reach out to you again. But if you add all of these things up, where you raise the standards of your personal life, your work ethic, your habits around your health, your habits around your personal integrity, you indirectly make yourself more of a winner. And this creates an upward spiral. It makes people wonder why you've got that special winner's mindset. And it makes you very magnetic. And this could very well be why someone hits you up again. The second idea is that you're up to more. You're simply doing more cool stuff with your life. This is especially true if you've dated someone and then somehow you're still keeping up with each other on social media. You haven't like blocked each other. So like for me <laughs> in the past in particular, people have reached out to me because they've seen an Instagram story of mine and Instagram in particular is where people in my circle, at least it's where I go to, to keep up with my friends and to see what they've been up to. And if someone can see that you're doing well, that you're doing more interesting things, this might be why they regain some interest in you. I've recently read through a book, 12 Months to a Million by Ryan Daniel Moran. I'll actually be connecting with the author for a podcast episode in a few weeks time. He's like offered to give me a coaching call, which is super nice of him. But there was a line in his book that particularly stood out to me. He said that money follows momentum. Money follows momentum. No one wants to fund an idea with no momentum. Money is attracted to movement. So if you can show movement, money will follow. Because anyone who's going to invest in a company, invest in a product, invest in a person, they want to be able to see that their money will be put to good use. And the best way to show that is to show that you're an action taker. You didn't just pitch an idea, you've also shown that you've already got a prototype built and you've been growing your own YouTube channel that has now a thousand followers after three months and you have a plan in place to acquire new customers, to build out an email list. These are all representations of momentum. Your investors would also wanna know after your first product is launched, what's that second product gonna be? These are all symbols of momentum, right? And here's the thing, I think this goes for women as well. If money is attracted to movement, so are women. In fact, people in general are attracted to movement. On the opposite end of that, the person who's like the least attractive is he who is sitting at home or sitting on his computer just playing video games because he's not up to anything. Especially like the black pill folks who are just like sitting at home and don't even try anymore. Why are they so unattractive to the public at large? It's because stagnancy is as repulsive as momentum is attractive. This is why people go to the movies and love cinema when it's done right. TV and cinema strip away the awkward, stagnant moments of life in favor of constant progression. When done right, it's very gripping. A life in motion in the pursuit of experiences, skills, building community, building a business. This is all very deeply attractive. Now, maybe you didn't have a lot of momentum in the past. Maybe you were living at home, you had a dead end job. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that if that's where you started out. But if in recent years or recent months, you found yourself creating more momentum in your life, you've been making progress in your career, your hobbies have gotten more interesting, you found more inspired locations where you've been building a sense of community, like all of these things will make you more attractive. It's very hard to not look at the guy who's up to stuff. And there's nothing wrong with starting out 
at like a lower momentum place in life. But if through the slow acquisition of skill and leverage, you create more, you do more, don't be surprised if people in the past reach out to you again. I was scared. <laughs> What's up, spicy boys? Hopefully you're not on the dirty websites anymore. You're retaining your vital essence and as a result, you're becoming more of a man and she's starting to take notice, you know? She's feeling your vibe. She's like, dang, I, I need this guy back in my life. That being said, you might be on other sites on the internet, you know, Neopets, RuneScape, freaking trying to buy another Dubla <laughs> online. By the way, I played Dubla from age eight to 13, like every week, I'm really good at it. You should be using a VPN when you're online. I know I do, I'm always on a VPN, partially because my dad always stresses the importance of cybersecurity and the fact that like cyber theft is the number one kind of theft. It has overtaken home theft because so much of our activity is documented online. And so to protect your identity and protect your presence online, you should be on a VPN. And this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in. Private Internet Access VPN. It's an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so that your ISP can't see the sites you visit. PIA VPN also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, I don't even realize that my PIA VPN is on. It's just running in the background, it's doing its thing. And what's cool about it is that I can also make it seem like my ISP is coming from different states. So if I wanna access content on Netflix or something that is out of state or out of country, I can actually just pretend that I'm from that country. I can just watch a whole new library of TV shows and movies. PIA can bypass ISP throttling, avoid DDoS attacks and other cyber harassment. And they have other useful features like split tunneling, ad blockers, and kill switch, which ensures that your connection is truly secure. If you use my link in the description box, you'll get a special discount plus three months for free use using my link, privateinternetaccess.com slash Captain Sinbad. There's also a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's really no risk at all. Thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Back to the rest of it. The third idea to bring up here is that someone's reached out to you again, has shown interest in you again because your vibration is higher. I'm like continually embarrassed at myself for bringing up this point, <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking about nofap, retention, and the other high vibration activities that go alongside it. Things like spending time in nature, meditating, cold baths, eating very healthy, unprocessed foods. All these things, they give you a luster. They give you a cosmic glow. I like am a science driven person, but this is one of those things that I can't back up scientifically very well that I really believe in. And so I don't have any books that I can reference as to why something like NoFap especially works. But so many experiences in my life have pointed to this. And I've seen this mentioned from other people as well. There's a YouTuber LFA, that's his channel, LFA, who I've been watching for many years at this point, up to three years. And in a recent kick of videos, he started talking more about retention, which I was really pleased to see because he sort of seemed too no nonsense to believe in or talk about something like NoFap. But even he mentioned that when you retain, people from your past hit you up more. It's just true. I can 100% point out many examples of this. And if you want to hear about all of the little anecdotes, Thomas and I shot a podcast episode some months ago, which I'll link in a card above right now, about our experiences going on streaks of retention. And I came out of that and my ears were ringing and I just straight up like, I like came so hard that I like <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> when you practice some degree of sexual discipline, you are just more vibed up and people notice, men and women, they all notice, like men wanna be your friend and women might find you more attractive. There was a time where I was more embarrassed to like acknowledge this or bring up the fact that I have still believed in NoFap after all these years of, you know, in my first year of YouTube, really making a lot of videos about it. And this is because I had joined up and like started kind of an online friendship with YouTubers like Matt DiBella, Joey from Better Ideas, Thomas Frank, and I wanted to fit in with their circle. Their content was much more professional and clean compared to mine. It was much more sponsor friendly. And they also had a lot of technical talent and skills I wanted to develop like cinematography. So in an effort to be more like them, I sort of tried to separate myself from my belief in some of these more spiritually driven practices. But I gotta say, man, after all these years, I have continued to believe in this discipline very strongly. And especially when you pair this habit with something like meditation, sleeping eight hours, and generally speaking, living a sober, clean, healthy lifestyle, 
you become a magnet for all living things. You end up getting more stares, you have an easier time connecting with other people. It generally speaking, also, you have a happier brain. Like you feel happier, you feel less anxious. It feels good to take on a good clean lifestyle. In fact, I've re-embraced NoFap as a discipline so strongly that I've actually shot and put up a course on the benefits of NoFap and what I do to maintain long streaks to live a retained lifestyle in general. It's called 100 Days of Momentum, but it's all about sexual discipline. And you can find a link to that course in the description box if you're interested in learning more about it. I'm not saying this is a guaranteed reason why someone in your past would hit you up again, but if you've never made it to 30 days, give it a go. Dude, like even your voice will get deeper. You'll probably notice a lot of strange, happy coincidences, a lot of like reconnections from your past, both with just like platonic friendships, like male friendships, and also romantic flings. And the final point I wanna bring up here is that maybe the reason someone has reached out to you again is because time just changes things. That's it. The progression of time might be enough for someone to feel differently about you. Like you're also just getting older and hopefully if you keep working on yourself, maybe if you're watching videos like mine, you're interested in bettering yourself as the years progress and time just changes things. Maybe you were just in the talking phase of someone you're dating. It was a casual early part of your relationship. And then they decided they didn't want to see you anymore because they want to date this other guy. And then maybe it didn't work out with that other guy. She lost someone, you know? <laughs> and so somehow you seem like a more attractive candidate. Now you could say like, oh, you should have picked me from the start. But dude, we're all just human beings. Maybe this girl is still super heartbroken about someone in her past. Maybe it's been years since she went through a heartbreak and it's hard for her to trust again. And now she's reaching out to you because something shifted within her. She got her own therapist and she's finally moved on. So she's reaching out again. It's easy to vilify women in this particular niche of YouTube. And I gotta say, it's especially tough for someone like me to move in the direction of this kind of content, even though I am interested in it because the truth is I actually have a very fragile ego and I've been hurt many times. Like I've been very wounded and bruised in my romantic endeavors in the past. Although I will say I've also been the cause of pain for some of the women I've dated in, in the past, just because I, I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't know how to break things off more honestly and more respectfully. Sometimes calling things off and dating people is just a messy endeavor in general. I think people deserve a little bit of empathy and grace. This isn't to say that if some girl is hitting you up again and she's like, hey, oh, you've been up to so much. I'm like, now I'm attracted to you again. You can make that decision for yourself if you want to introduce her back into your life. I do think you have to serve yourself first, but don't be so quick to say something like, oh, all women are hypergamous and shallow. And now that I have a fancy car and I make a lot of money, like you want to date me again. Don't be so red pilled that you don't give people some grace. When my friend Henry was on our podcast just a little while ago, I think he put it very elegantly. <laughs> he said, women are just human beings, but with vaginas. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And hey, maybe despite everything you've done for yourself, you've raised your standards, you've got more going on, you're a high vibration person. Maybe she still just never reaches out to you again. Maybe she was super hypergamous. And when you didn't have a lot going on, she wasn't interested in you. And then she rejected you. She broke your heart and also just didn't care. She didn't think twice about it. Even so, I now feel actually some level of gratitude for whatever heartbreak and trauma I've gone through. To be honest, I have used any anguish or trauma. I feel like that word is overused, but any hurt I've experienced in the past, it has 100% served to temper my personality, to help build me more aggressively into the man I can one day respect and admire in myself. I'm not fully arrived there, but I'm on that journey. And so all that darkness, all that hurt, it sucks in the moment, but it can make you better if you let it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nick Hill. This channel is a combination of comedy sketches, lifestyle challenges, video essays, and personal development videos for creatives. If any of that appeals to you, then consider subscribing. We do work very hard to make sure that every video hits hard for viewers. If you're someone who wants to grow your own YouTube channel and you sort of like the style of videos I make, you sometimes maybe are wondering why my views are good or why my views have gotten better over time. What tips maybe someone who's been in the game for four years could impart onto you. I now offer a YouTube coaching program where we will break down ideally 12 edits, 12 
tactically chosen videos for you over 12 weeks and work on different elements that help promote your video in the algorithm, like better storytelling, so that you can also grow into your potential as a content creator. If that's something that you might be interested in, then I would love to work with you. And there's a link in the description box to an application where you can apply to one of my coaching slots. We can get on a discovery call and see if we're a good fit for each other. I also would like to quickly pitch my Instagram and Raja Pandey, where I put out about a post and a story a week related to some content on productivity, entrepreneurship, fitness, making yourself a well-rounded renaissance man. So if you'd like to connect with me further, I'd love if you could follow me on there. But with all of that out of the way, for those of us who raise our standards, regardless of whether she hits you back up or not, for those of us who speed up our momentum and raise our vibration, to us I say greatness is definitely coming. We'll see you next time.